Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to tailor a suit myself that I thrifted for 25 bucks. This is my second attempt at tailoring myself, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of my five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. First of all, let me give you a frame of reference. One thing that I try to do in my channel is I try to stay in my lane. What do I mean by that? In other words, I am, I am certainly no uh, Preston Soto or a Kirby Hollison for sure, you know? So I'm not gonna talk to you about things that I don't really have an experience with. For example, bespoke suits, okay? So I've never been the person that wanted to be the nicest dressed person in the room. I'm just not at that level yet. What I do want to do is of the few nicest dressed people in the room, I want to be the person that spent the least. That's kind of my mission right now. So if I can get a lot more for my money, I'm all about that at this point. Now, as far as what I have here, like I said in the, the brief intro, this is Statement Italy. Um, I looked up the brand and I looked up their similar suits to this. And it does say Super 150. It doesn't have a lot of information, but I do believe intermediate level quality material. I think what this is, is a really a cheaper brand that's made to look like a more expensive brand. So for example, if you see here, let me show a few features. The buttonhole is completely non-functional, so it's a typical cheap buttonhole. Now do you see this, it's called pick stitching. This used to be a sign that it was an expensive suit. And then, I don't know when, 2000s or something like that, 2010, something like that. Um, I'm gonna put some video links in the description if you really wanna understand suits, the real source. I think the best source uh, in general would be uh, the, the Gentleman's Gazette. But anyway, this is completely machine done. It's very evenly spaced, and this is supposed to make it look like it is a higher end, which, is, which it is not. Uh, some of the other things you're gonna see, um, I don't know for sure, but I think these are just regular cheap plastic buttons, non-functional cuffs. You know, so it's you're not horrible, it's not great. For where I'm at, it, it'll do the purpose just fine. You know, I'm just trying to expand my wardrobe and have some more things to wear, but I am a firm believer that fit, something fitting well is much more important than something that is, you know, a, a $2,000 suit that doesn't fit. So let me show you a little bit more of the jacket fit here. As far as the fit of the jacket, um, of course, remember, like I said, the perspective here, okay? Not bespoke, right? Not wealthy yet. Shoulders, I think, are okay. Um, if they were any bigger, I think they'd be too big, but I think the shoulders are okay. The fet neck fits okay. Um, so shoulders all right. It's too big in the, it is, there's way too much room here in the chest. I need to take out, I think I'm gonna do it from the side, see, no shape, right? It has fairly high armholes when you have high armholes. See how it all raises up, but that can't really be, um, I can't fix that, that's difficult, so that's gonna stay. Right, but I'm gonna take some out of the sides, give it some silhouette, some shape. Now also, if you see where the jacket length is here, uh, the best method, I've seen several different methods for measuring jacket length, the best one I found, I've heard some people say ride the rails. In other words, it should hit in the bottom of your hand. Uh, that's just kind of too vague for me. Um, I've seen other people say the, the length from the collar to the jacket should be equal from, you know, in other words, 50-50, the length from the, uh, bottom of your jacket to the bottom of the pants cuff should be equal from here. That's a vague as well. The best method I found is falls between these two knuckles. The end of the jacket should fall between these two knuckles. Shorter for a tighter fit. In other words, if this was a slim fit, modern fit suit, it would be higher up, down closer to this knuckle. So if I go by that, you see it falls right at the end of my thumb. So what that really means is I need to take out probably that much jacket length, which normally you don't want to do, but I think I can do that on this. I think it's just rehemming the bottom and stitching a curve. Um, so that's the jacket. As far as bringing in the pants, they fit okay here, and they fit very well through the waist. But like I said, the way to take this out, the first step according to, again, this is according to the aspiring gent, is to just kind of gather this stuff here and start pinning it down. You don't take it out here, but this is where you pin it. So let me do that.
leave a mark. Now I need to measure how much that is. It's three inches, just a hair over three inches at the widest point. Three inches. Down here, it tapers down to and evens out at about one and three quarters inches. I didn't realize this. This is called stitching in the ditch. There's a seam. This is held together. The cuff is held together by a, a row of stitching right in the seam. They hide it. So I have to take that apart. That's not too bad. Now this is the scary part. I need to take this all apart next. So now I'm following Aspiring Gents instructions. This thing here is a sweat guard. I need to remove this, or at least unstitch it from the inside. If you can see here, and this should not be too difficult. There we go, that's easy. Very gently removed, and some stitches here in the center. There we go, now it's out of the way, beautiful. So here is the reference pocket. This would be the butt here. That's where I pinned, but this here is where we're gonna be actually taking the fabric in. So this is the back panel, this is the front panel. Uh, so I need to take this seam apart which is this one right here. <laughs> Oops. That was pretty stressful. Let me see what the crap I just did. Uh, can you see here, the, the all this fabric is what I took in. It's not complete yet, but. Uh, I'm gonna try them on. Okay, here is the undone side. See how much fabric there is there. 
Here's the side I finished. I gotta be careful though, because there's still a hole in the butt, so I can't turn too far. But you see, right? That much fabric versus that much. Isn't that amazing? One more side to do. So I'm not gonna videotape everything, but what I did here is I changed the settings on the stitcher. It puts that like, can you see here? It's like a, well, it's hard to see a little bit, but it's kind of like a zigzag stitch. And I don't know that's necessarily the right stitch. I picked one off of the machine. But anyway, what that I think is supposed to do is the same thing as this stitch does here, which is just hold the edges together and keep it from fraying really bad. So I'm just cutting off the excess, by the way. Remember that first hole that I made, I screwed up. Uh, I was kind of lucky where that hole is on the part that I'm taking off. So that hole is gonna be gone. And some of the, the sources say you can leave this fabric in, but uh, this is a huge amount of fabric. This is three inches of fabric, three and a quarter inches. I'm not leaving this on there. I have zero plans on, you know, ever needing to put that fabric in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off because it's way excessive. So you can see that's kind of what I'm doing here is just cutting it off. Also, I sewed the butt back together. Uh, you can see here. And I also made a hole there by accident. So I just went a little bit inside it. And I guess maybe my thought was, I didn't pin or measure this, but my thought was, eh, just, you know, take a little bit more slack out of the butt as well. So I started here. You can see where that black thread ends. And I went all the way to here. So now the pants should be put back together other than the cuffs. So here is the right leg it is pressed. I might need to do it again. Can you kind of see where the old crease was? Here's what happens. So the front crease is good. You see the two seams match. Of course, I haven't fixed the cuff yet. But then what happens now is because I took in material, you see the back crease is in the wrong spot. So I needed to iron that flat and then put in a new crease, which is what I did here. And this is also what it looks like when you, see there's the part that I did. When you iron that nice and flat, uh, versus this side where you can see it's still kind of sticking up. So that's what I was doing, ironing that flat, iron this seam, then iron this seam flat so it looks like that, um, and then put in a new crease. I'll be right back. Together and the first part is stitching. This is the inside of the, I'm on the inside of the pant leg and you stitch it along there. If you can see right there, the blue stitching and that keeps the, basically keeps the, you know, cuff from totally unrolling. And then now, see that's on the inside, it's folded up. That stitching is basically hidden. And then right here in the seam, stitch in the ditch, right? Almost invisible right in there and that's what keeps the cuff up so there we go okay guys if you see here I've got uh, it pinned that's taking and I'll have to measure it but I don't know what that is it's probably like two and a half inches I'm sorry an inch and a half to two inches and if you can kind of see this side just all this extra fabric and it's just drop see boom just drops straight down this side, it is sticking out a little bit. You know, it's still a flap there. It's not tucked, but isn't that much better? It's not bespoke, right? But I think it's a lot better. I don't think I want to take more than that out and risk, you know, taking too much out. And I'm taking that all the way down. I think that's going to be pretty good. So the next step here is to mark with the marking chalk where I pinned it. Now what's going to happen is right now I'm marking on the side panel. Uh, the panel to the right of that is the back panel. It, it helps to empty your pockets. So I'm not going to remove material from the back panel, only from the side panel. So after you mark all the way down, then you can remove the pins. Uh, you'll see that here momentarily. So here's collecting all the pins. 
And then I'm going to go over and kind of mark it a little bit more clearly. I think what I wound up doing was actually taking a little bit less out of the bottom. I just, you know, I don't know. I just felt like it was too aggressive. Uh, and I didn't want the, the bottom buttonhole to pull out. So now you have to open up the jacket because all of this stitching is on the inside. So you have to open up the bottom of the jacket. And then I'm also going to open up the side seam itself. And you work on it from the inside. And this is really disorienting. This was a very, very, took me hours until I really uh, you know, understood what I was looking at. Now in this step, I have the jacket inside out. And I'm actually removing the seam that is holding together that panel that I'm actually going to remove the material from. So now I'm transferring the marks that were on the front to the inside of the jacket based on measurements. In case you're curious, that's called back tacking where you reverse the direction for a second and uh, that helps hold the stitches in so they don't come unraveled under stress where the beginning of the thread is. And I don't know if you can tell, but I am taking out quite a bit of material here along that new line. Uh, turn it to make the 90 degree turn, uh, you know, where the vent is. And you can see that L shape there, those two pieces matched up before. You can see now obviously one is way overhanging and I'm going to cut that extra material off. So you can see on the bottom, the new stitch line and the original stitch line was at the top. Not too shabby. Now I'm cutting off the extra material here. And this part is sewing back together uh, the lining. So here I'm going to shorten the bottom of the jacket one and a quarter inches, which is going to be that much. So I've already taken the seam apart. I'll have to put it back together by hand and I'm going to one and a quarter inches Move it up. I'm not going to hit the pocket. I think it'll be okay. So I'm going to go downstairs, iron that crease out, put a new one in one and a quarter up, and try and recreate that curve. So here's where I'm at. This area here, that crease was the original. I cut off already and I lost it already. Oh, here it is. So this I cut off of there, moved it up, ironed it. This was the hard part. You see, this is where the original fold was, and where they folded under, there's very little fabric. So I'm creating a new line there, and I'm cutting off the extra, just leaving a little bit. You see that? So, and I'm just going to remove all that. This, by the way, is a double-sided tape. You see, you peel off the, you iron it on, then you peel off the backing. So uh, I think they call it, um, what do they call this? A hemming tape. You see, so there's the the tape part. You iron it on, then peel off the paper. This is the middle section of the back of the coat between the two. This is the side vent. This is the side vent. This one's going to be a little easier. Just basically folding it up more, cutting I don't, I don't even know if I need to cut off the excess, but just fold it up more. Just fold it up an inch and a quarter. That's it. I'm going to iron it up flat first. Tacked down. 
I think it's gonna be in good shape. See this side, how long it is? Down to the tip of my thumb. So here's where I'm at. Here's the side, right, the lapel. Well, I guess the lapel's up here, but here's the side. And here is the, the vent. It's all closed up on the outside. Uh, I have to iron that, but that's the new stitch line. So now I have to put the lining back together. It doesn't go this way. So if you see over here, the seam is invisible. So it has to be sewn from the inside like that. Um, down to here. So I gotta turn it inside out. Here's where I'm at. This side's basically done. All I gotta do is tack this back, you know, sew this back in, but that's, that's all done. That's been shortened. You can see the difference there. And the difference is right around inch and a quarter. So one more side to go. I have to take in the other side, uh, which would be this seam from the armpit down to here and shorten this. So here is the side vent. Um, I've got this all apart. This is where the vent starts. So I've got the bottom open here. Um, that's all obviously split. I've also got the uh, lining here separated from each other. And then I also open the seam up. It goes all the way up to the armpit. Um, and now I need to take it in. Uh, the first time you do this, there would be a chalk line on here from where you pinned it. But I'm just gonna match the measurements that I already did on the other side. Got it pinned as you can see there. All right, and I think that's where I need it. And that's gonna give it some shape. I think it could be a pretty good shape. There's only one spot where the fabric is not stitched on the inside of this edge. This is my stitching, but I duplicated how it was constructed. So you can see here the lining is stitched through the edge. Now, the reason they do it this way is because this edge is not visible because it's underneath. This is where the vent overlaps. So same thing over here. And this edge here now, instead of this coming and being sewn back on like that, I have to fold this back about there because I removed material. So I now need to decrease the amount of material and iron that out. Does that kind of make sense? Then I'll sew this back on and I'll take a little material out of this. I think you kind of get the idea. Okay, I absolutely screwed this up. I don't think it's fatal. I think I can fix it. This is the, this is the center piece of the back here. You can see obviously the other side and this side. I screwed up. I went in on the back I should have taken it in on the side panel. So I gotta take the stitching out, hopefully without ruining the fabric. I need to take up this side. Ugh. It's actually kind of complicated. Um, I'm putting the lining back together. I have it inside out. I'm putting the lining back together. This part of the lining is not stitched to the jacket. And if you notice, it was stitched together here. You see I'm moving the stitch from here to here to take out some of the lining to make up for where the jacket was taken in. Now I turn it right side out and you see stitched together. And I'll show you how the vent goes together. So here's the back panel. 
on the right side here is the back panel. So now this is the center panel. You see it's stitched together there. And this is the side panel. And this now is going to get stitched right down there. Uh, this needs to be stitched to here first. And you want to do that from the inside. And that's what we have. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? Now, I gotta seal this back up. This does not uh, stitch from the inside. This one stitches from the outside. Now I'm gonna go downstairs and I'm going to iron that over like that. Too shabby. Bad, but uh, I missed right there. I think I'm gonna redo it. Here's something every thrifter loves to see on a jacket that you get at a thrift store. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Can you see this pocket? All right, the pockets come stitched shut so that I believe it's so that when they're manufacturing, they don't roll open and stuff like that. So get it very carefully, pull it open. See, the stitching is pretty loose. And when you pop one, should start to look at that. This is a special tool, stitch picker. It's a couple bucks at any place that sells uh, sewing and craft supplies. I got this one at Hobby Lobby. And then I got the bright pink handle because I felt it was the most li least likely to lose it. So there you go. And now the pocket is open. Here it is, all finished up. I got so frustrated, I got so out of whack, I got so discombobulated. Uh, you know, my mental focus was all on just trying to complete this task. I was about to give up about five times. Um, so let me point out the good, bad, and ugly. So right down here, this stitching here, this stitching here should be a little darker in color. You see this pick stitching? It doesn't really match, you know, as far as the stitch length, but that's as long as I get it, but I was not going to do that by hand. And you can see it got a little farther away here from the edge. It's inconsistent, but uh, that's the main challenge I had with it, is it puckered right there where I actually missed the, the, I, I had to create that fold, and that fold didn't quite match the outer fold, so I missed and it created a pucker, but... Uh, this side came out a little better, although you see the stitching did 
get a little bit too far from the edge, but hey, I'll take it. I did reattach the lining. Um, I reattached, I did all that just by hand. And I'll cut in uh, a view of what it looked like before. Not bad. There's a little bit of on the shoulders again, the creasing. I'm sure that's my fault. But the pants I'm really happy with. Remember, I shortened the jacket by an inch and a quarter in length. I took out a full three inches from the thighs and gave the jacket shape, as you'll see. I'm really happy with the way the pants came out. I think the fit is really just about right for this, for a classic fit like this. The pleats now lay nice and, you know, pretty much flat like they should. I think the fit is good, just about how it should be. The sleeve length I'm not touching here. I think the sleeve length is good. Yeah, it could go a quarter inch. Maybe I'll mess with them sometime down the road. The sleeves could be shortened by just about by a fingertip width. And that would give me, you know, like that. But I think it's acceptable. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below if you think I did a decent job for an amateur. Uh, feel free to subscribe. And if you've ever looked at a pair of shoes online, the exact same color and model that you already own and thought about buying them, you may want to subscribe to my channel. All right, God bless you guys. Have an amazing day. Thanks. enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on playlists. And from there, you can go to things such as before and after videos, where you'll find a whole list of videos similar to this one.